What's up, you guys? Avery here. Wanted to bring you guys a bit of a different deck profile today. Um, I haven't posted in the past couple days. I've been doing the history of Yu-Gi-Oh!, which I will be releasing another episode of that tonight along with this deck profile for you guys. Uh, if you guys have been keeping up with me in the channel, you will know that I sold my Zodiacs to um, my buddies at my last uh, regional in Kissimmee, Orlando. So I don't really have a meta deck right now, per se. Uh, so I've just been kind of taking a break from the game, uh, competitively anyway, and just been playing kind of more fun decks like Chamber and whatnot, just to kind of, you know, still keep my whistle wet in the game per se. Um, but I also just want to kind of play more off the beaten path decks such as Chamber and this deck, Final Countdown. <laughs> and I can already see the comments now that I am a piece of crap for playing this deck, but this is what I'm going to be playing at Locals and maybe even the regional uh, in Kissimmee once again in June. But uh, I am not too sure of that as of yet. But without any further ado, I wanted to show this off to you guys. Because another deck profile I saw from someone with like 200-something subscribers, it's about three months old. Um, and I wanted to throw in my two cents into the ring for Final Countdown. Because this is another deck that my dad has been playing for years and years and years. If you watch my Chamber and interview with him, then you'll know that he's been playing Chamber for six plus years. Uh, he knows the deck inside and out. He pretty much knows Final Countdown inside and out as well. So, anyway, without any further ado, let's go ahead and jump into the deck. Again, this is what I'll be running at Locals for probably a while, and then switching back from this and Chamber, um, just because, you know, those are really the only two decks I can build right now, because I sold my entire collection, and I just buy and sell for the latest deck. I've gone through all this. Uh, so, I will be showing off a side deck and an extra deck, but the extra deck is just 15 fusions. So, let's get into it. We have three card card D. This is your draw engine of the deck. Um... In my opinion, you have to play three. Um, it's just a good card that kind of keeps you ahead. You know, you're low on resources and you can just draw two with card cards. It's good. Not much to really explain there. Actually, I'll leave that right there. Then we've got Triple Lava Golem. Some people play two, some people play one. I like three. It's so good. Um, it's a two tribute kaiju. You know, they've got a totally awesome Nabaha Mutt. You can lava golem. They've got stuff on the board that you don't like. You can lava golem. It's just, it it, get rid, it gets rid of a lot of um, problematic cards on the board. Denko Seka, unless they just sit on it, then you just kaiju them in game two. Then we've got a lot of hand traps. We've got three Battle Fader, three Sif Scarecrow, and one Speedroid Manko. In case you guys don't know what Speedroid Manko does, he has zero attack and, or I'm sorry, 100 attack and 2,000 defense. Level four wind. Uh, machine, and whenever you declare a direct attack while he's in my hand, he gets special summoned to the field in defense mode, and then all face-up monsters that my opponent controls are changed to defense mode. So, you know, with a 2,000 booty, he's uh, he's pretty good. So, that's the monsters. For the spells, we got three duality, standard. Three gold sark with the one of final countdown, you're basically playing four final countdown. Two swords are in light. I've noticed through testing that this sits on the board for quite some time, which is really surprising. And if you think about it too, unless you're playing against a deck that exceeds hard, um, like in the Diamond Dyer or Castell, very frequently that can just spin this away into the deck or pop it, the only real outs that people have to this card is like a Dryden, if they're able to make it, um, or a Twin Twisters. And if they don't have either of those, really they're not doing much to the swords, uh, which is very, very surprising. So this sits on the board longer than most people would think. And on top of that, too, it's just another problematic card for them to deal with. They might go for this instead of, like, you know, a set balance of judgment that you have or something. we got the one of Upstart because we can. The one of One Day, it's good. <laughs> and then, of course, the one of Final Countdown. I really wish that this was at three. I hate the fact that Konami hit this from three to one just because they hate solitaire decks. You know, you need to let the player base play what they want to play. You know, if someone doesn't really have a lot of money to spend in the game and they want to play something trolly like Final Countdown, you should let them. You shouldn't hit the card to one just because of it. But Konami's in it for the money. You know, they're going to be idiots. They've always been idiots. So uh, then we got two balance of judgment. You need to be careful about how you play this card. I've noticed that whenever I play it, whenever I'm low on resources, like if I only have like a hand trap or two in my hand, um, or just not a lot of cards in general, and I see that my opponent's really building up resources, you can play this and easily draw four or five cards off of it. So it's just all a matter of having knowledge of when to play it. So Some people only play one. I've even seen some people play three. I think two is the perfect number. And then we've got three Wabaku and three Threatening Roar. You need to have all the stall in the world to beat your opponent. And then this is a tech of mine. One Macrocosmos and one Skill Drain. Um, I don't see this played in a lot of builds. Rather, instead of seeing these two cards played, I see Rainbow Life being played. I think Rainbow Life is a good card. The only problem with the, with Rainbow Life is that you have to discard a card. And I've had so many 
playtesting games where I've had like a skill drain or a macro in my hand, and I've thought to myself, well, what if this was a rainbow life? And then I look at the other cards in my hand, and they were, you know, like balance of judgments or hand traps, things I didn't really want to discard, and I'm like, it's not really worth discarding to gain life points when you're only just going to get one gain off it, and your opponent's just going to stop. Um, it is nice that you can play Rainbow Life in the damage step. From my under understanding, you can play it in the damage step from this other profile that I saw. Um, but I just personally like Skill Drain and Macro better. You know, if you're playing against 60 card Inferno or 60 card Payload, any 60 card deck and they activate Lawn Mowing, you just chain the Macro and it fizzles. Um, the opponent tries to make a Dryden to pop your face up swords, you chain Skill Drain, uh, and they don't really see it coming. It's just very good lockdown cards that, um, can really screw your opponent over and can really give them a hard time. If you have both of these on board with Stall, I mean, if you have both of these on the, on the board with Final Countdown already active, you're, you should be winning the game. Uh, because really not a lot of decks can deal with Skill Drain and Macro on the board at the same time. And then finally, we have three Frozen Soul and three Thunder Ruler. Now, I put these last because I want to go over some rulings um, that have changed throughout the years with Frozen Soul and Thunder Ruler. So, it used to be ruled that, let's say you have a Thunder Ruler and three Frozen Soul on the board, okay? You have all of these set. Now, let's say you draw for turn, okay? So, you're in your standby phase. Um... Frozen Soul, you activate it, and its effect reads that whenever your life points are 2,000 or lower than your opponent's, you activate it, and they have to skip their next battle phase. So, just keeping that in mind. You could then chain Frozen Soul to Frozen Soul to Thunder Ruler. So, this is Chain Link 1, Chain Link 2, Chain Link 3, Chain Link 4. The chain resolves backwards, so the Thunder Ruler is going to resolve. Your opponent cannot declare an attack this turn. Then this will resolve. Your opponent can't attack next turn. They can't attack the turn after that. They can't attack the turn after that. That's how it used to be ruled. It is no longer ruled like that. Here is today how Frozen Soul works. You cannot... The proper term is not stacking. You can't stack uh, stopping battle phases. So you take two Frozen Souls out of the equation, and this is what you can do. Let's say that you have a Frozen Soul and a Thunder Ruler set. Your opponent draws. They're in their standby phase. You activate Frozen Soul and you chain the Thunder of Ruler. The chain resolves backwards. The Thunder of Ruler will resolve. They cannot declare an attack this turn. Then the Frozen Soul will resolve. They cannot declare an attack next turn. If you chain the other two Frozen Souls in uh, your deck, whether they're face down on the field or whatever, they will simply fizzle to this, uh, this Frozen Soul. So the highest that you can do is make them skip two battle phases. That's it. The best thing to do with these other Frozen Souls, if you don't have a Thunder Ruler to combo with them, try and activate the Frozen Soul on your turn, because then it's, in theory, a one day of peace. Because then you pass turn, and it goes back to your opponent, and they cannot attack on that turn. Because it says the next battle phase. Well, they can't attack on their next battle phase. Well, the next turn, the, the battle phase that they enter after that is now skipped if that makes sense. And some people used to say, too, that if you don't actually enter your battle phase while Frozen Soul is active, Frozen Soul rolls over. That is incorrect. Anyone that tells you that um, is either A, trying to teach you, or trying to cheat you, or B, they are uh, uninformed. So the Frozen Souls do not skip over turns. So, um, you know, a ruling used to be that if you don't actually attempt to enter your battle phase while a Frozen Soul is active, then it would roll over to the next turn, and then they basically could infinitely not attack. That is not true. I don't believe that's ever been true. Um, it may have been true for a while, but as far as I know, that has never been true. The highest that you can stack, per se, the Frozen Souls is just one, which is when they enter their standby phase, you activate the Frozen Soul on Chain Link 1 and activate the Thunder of Ruler on Chain Link 2. That is the highest that you can do it. Anything other than that is just going to skip that turn's battle phase, and it's basically a threatening roar. You need to know what these Frozen Souls do, because these rulings get very, 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 very tricky, and you really need to know what you're doing, or else A, someone who is not informed is going to say, no, you can't do that, or B, someone that does know how it works is going to try and cheat you because they don't want to lose the final countdown and they're just being a jackass. <laughs> So, that's that. And again, you do play 3 Thunder Ruler um, because it just combos well with the Frozen Soul. <clears throat> so, um, Extra Deck is really irrelevant. You're just playing all of the goodies. Um, feel free to copy this. This was just 15 fusions that I had laying around. Um, 
Then for the side deck, we've got three kaiju. You side deck these in game two. Um, you side deck these in uh, taking out the lava golems because your opponent is more than likely going to play a denko uh, game two to stop you. And denko is going to be very prevalent, I feel, moving forward into this format. Um, the date of this video being uploaded, whatever that is, um, just because the paleo is very good right now. And then we've got three golden ladybug because more than likely you're going to be either close to time or in time starting game two. And if you've won game one, then all you have to do is basically pull a self-destruct button that I used to do and just make your make your life points higher than your opponents and win. And at worst case, you get a draw. <laughs> then we got two poison of the old man because inflicting 800 and gaining 1200 is good. And then we got three try and guess, which is why we play the 15 cards in the uh, 15 fusions in the extra deck. Rather, you just activate this, call fusion, and gain 3k, and uh, it's pretty much GG from there. Then we have the one of Rainbow Life. I like one. Um, I don't really like any more than that. We have another Manko because it's Manko. And then we got two Twin Twister, and of course the three YCS and the one Yugi Token because they're amazing. Um, and then two Twin Twister because if the opponent is playing Imperial Order or like anti-spell, if they're being stupid and playing World Decree for some reason because they think it's good, then this can really shut them down. But I'm not really fearing Twin Twister. If I happen to get hit, or I'm not really fearing World Decree, rather. If I happen to get hit with a World Decree, then okay, you're that one guy in the room playing World Decree, but uh, it's not really something that you need to fear this format. If you're fearing World Decree, then you're fearing many other things that, irre that are irrelevant in this format, in my humble opinion. But I just feel that World Decree is just not good right now. People are going to be playing Denko over that, which is why you play the Kaiju. So that is my final countdown deck, you guys. I apologize for the profile being so long. I really want to make sure I had all of my ruling straight for you guys, for anyone that wants to play this deck, and to make sure that you guys don't get cheated, because people will be salty and pissed off that you're playing Final Countdown, and they will try and cheat you majority of the time, I'm going to say. It really depends on your local or your regional or anything like that. And, of course, if you ever do feel like you're getting cheated, you can always call over a judge. Just keep in mind that Frozen Soul, in a way, acts like a threatened roar, but for the next battle phase, if you're doing it on its own, then it's just skipping that turn's battle phase, because the next battle phase is considered whatever battle phase happens next. So, you know, you activate just a single Frozen Soul on your opponent's turn, then that turn's battle phase is skipped. Not the next one after that, it's that turn's, because that is considered the next battle phase. So... Anyway, maybe can I will release an errata or something to make it easier to understand. Who knows? But this is Final Countdown, you guys. If you want to see more deck profiles like this that are kind of, you know, not meta, let me know in the comments below. I can definitely make it happen. Thank you guys for watching, as always, and subscribe if you have not already.